How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics. And today we're going to be doing the follow-up video from the previous video, which usually going to be as we're going to be working with this 1500 series uh, S7 Siemens S7 1500 series PLC. And today we're going to do the, the hardware configuration within the within the TI portal. A couple of things before we start. I show a little, we talk a little bit about the LEDs, uh, what those LEDs mean on uh, on all those cards, and uh, a couple of other things that I. Think might be worth showing to you, and so yeah, and then we can jump on the laptop and go through some uh, hardware configurations and upload, download, how to get program in and out, and things like that. So uh, I mean, there's a, there's quite a lot to cover. So we're going to be doing step by step uh, guides, so to get us moving. So yeah, if you missed the last video, we already did the 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 whole rack assembly definite checkout. If you want to see how that's done, how to assemble it, and what is what. So do check out the previous video. We also checked out the little HMI that CPU has, how it works, and all the bits and ins and outs that are there available. So yeah, that's what we do today. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we are. So first thing, let's have a look at these status lights. For the CPU, you have a basic status light in here, which is the orange and green between start and stop. You have an error light in there, in olden days used to be called SF, and uh, obviously this one in here, that's going to be your maintenance light. Later on, we're probably going to see if we can find a ways of uh, turning on maintenance. It's, it's usually when you use memory card or updating or, or, or other things, the maintenance lights will come on. So uh, from there on, uh, usually usually in these cards, there's only two lights implemented, usually, but sometimes, sometimes, well, I haven't seen one, but maybe there is the third light uh, uh, would be used for something, but usually a status light and error light. So that's all it is. This is going to be red when there's uh, errors and things like that. Sometimes there's a uh, flashing codes and things like that. You can have a look at it in a uh, in a, in, a, in, a, in a manual. So what those flashing lights mean, but status and error lights. And that's it. And another thing we're going to quickly show you is uh, this screen in here. By the way, it can be removed if you wish to and save a bit of money on CPU. This comes off and. Uh, can be uh, purchased uh, separately if they ever go down for you. So, uh, and uh, that's about it for now. There's a couple of things I want to show you with the cards, but once you get to them, we get to them. So having said that, so uh, let's uh, let's get to the actual configuration. Alrighty, so let's create a, a new project. We're gonna call this a uh, CPU uh what was the what was the part number on down there cpu 513 uh 513 that'll do we're blah blah that will do so uh let's uh, create it let him do his uh business and hopefully he's going to be doing this fairly quickly for us and not dragging time too much come on okay so uh, let's go straight into the project view Taking his time again. There you go. So and then we're gonna do and start add, add add a new device into it. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna do the basic discovery. And so looking for all, all our uh, CPUs. So uh, what we're gonna need to do? We're gonna have to tell him uh, what, what CPUs we're looking for. Obviously we are in Sematic S7, so it's gonna be 1500 C uh, CPU. Let's open up and we uh, you can do it manually if you wish to, but I'm just gonna let him to discover everything that is on our uh, panel. So we don't have to drag and drop them, uh, dr drop on them. That's that, that that that's what I would class the easiest way to do. So I uh, click on that one. The firmware version. I'll tell you one thing. What we're gonna do? Uh, don't, don't think that matter too much. But sometimes it does. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna take this off. We're gonna go into the nodes and have a look at it. Uh, what's on our network? when you decide to open up. So I believe I'm on this card. Uh, you had a real tech. Yeah, let's find it. If all goes well, it should find it for you and tell you what IP address is and everything like that. It basically is you're looking for anything that is on the, on the thing. A total automation portal has encountered a problem. This every now and then happens. I don't know. This is, this is probably the second time it happens. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send the report for them to uh, uh, have a look at it, and let's restart. Here we are, we are uh, back. I think that crash happens when I leave my laptop open and then it goes into sleep and while TIA portal is still open, it might cause a bit of a glitch. I think that's what's, that's, I think that's what's causing it. So let's get back into the 
thingy, search again. There we are. So we found this is our IP address and let's click show. Uh, oh, we don't want to do that. So we definitely don't want to do that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to quickly change that. Looks like my, uh, my API address subnet is a little bit different than I thought it is. Because whatever reason I thought it's at zero, but it looks like it might be different. So we're going to go into control panel. So we're going to change that because that's my static address. If you guys don't know, I'll show you how I do that. So I just change my address a little bit. So go network and sharing. That's my card when I'm plugged onto it. And I'm going to change my static so I don't need to create any additional addresses. And let's go into properties and uh, TC protocol. Let's change that to, as you can see, my, the, my uh, previous one was saying uh, zero. I need that zero in here, so so we don't have to make a mess around. So, I mean, we could have changed that in a control line thing like that, but we're just gonna do it in here, just in case you guys need to do it yourselves. So let's have a look. So uh, search again. There we go, and show. And that should fix now that issue with him. There we go, it's trying to uh, do, create another address. So there we are. So if you go on online diagnostics into here, and quick, uh, quickly have a look what the uh, so our firmware is actually 2.6, it's not bad, it's quite high actually, because I think the latest one is 2.9. So that's fine, so let's go back into the, oh, add a new device. And 15, 15, go down into the CPU, and let's tell him it's a 2.6. I don't think it matters, but just anyway, we'll do it anyway. Okay, do your thinking now. It's basically what he's doing now is it looking at it. And it should, if all well, display what we're after. We're going to say detect. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to click in the click detect. So he's going to detect everything that's on that rack. So uh, let's search again. There we go, and detect from that IP. And there we go, as you can see, you found all the cards for you, so there's no need for any manual add-ons. So uh, we are pretty much good to go. So all we need to do now, we need to pump that in. So uh, by clicking onto the CPU, as you can see, this guy in here downloaded to the device. So uh, if you are trying to, a, uh, let's, let's actually, what we're going to do, I'm going to quickly pump this in, into the device. So already, we already done that. We'll look at it a, lot, a lot more other stuff in the future, but for now, this is, this is a good starter. So let's search. And there we are. So, and let's load in. It, it's, I mean, it's empty, it's nothing in OB1 and anything like that. So it's just going to load in the configurations for us now. So basically configured the whole system. So and if all goes well, the CPU should be able to go into the run mode. So let me pump that off. And uh, where are we? There we go. So he's doing his thing down there. Please wait. So I'm still playing with my camera buttons. So uh, let's load it in. I still Wait. And there we go. So, and let's, let's, let's put them in action start modules. It's just to, just to show what is what. So if all goes well, everything on our CPU, as you can see, all the lights are stopped flashing. All the, all the green lights has come on on all the cards. And it's basically our system now is configured and is ready to uh, start working, whatever we are going to be trying to do. So that is that. So now let's say you have set the system up and you repumped it all in and then let's say you want to download out, basically get the information out of the CPU, so like get the program out and things like that. All you need to do is, and not by knowing your CPU, it's our IP address, because uh, you just go online. You can see everything is green in here and you will have this button now uh, gray, uh, uh, lit up. It says upload from uh, the device. So you'll be able to upload all the file, everything that you need out of your CPU if there is anything in there. And any errors and things like that, they're all going to be displayed in here and things like that. But we're going to be checking those out more or less in the future videos. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a good start for us. 
So let me just flip the cameras. Not that one, that one for now. So we're going to obviously continue in a later video. There's lots and lots and lots of things we're going to be playing with this CPU and the actual whole setup and things like that. And uh, that will do for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And yeah, I will see you in the next video.